The year was 1980. The day was Saturday. On the night of December 20th, right before Christmas. The day of the frozen lady incident. It was a freezing winter night in a tiny town called Langby in Minnesota. The population of Langby is about 100 people, even to today. So a 19-year-old girl named Jean Hilliard was driving home after an evening of fun hanging out with her friends. It was around 12 o'clock midnight, a snowy night, and she decided to take a shortcut to try to make it home a little faster. It was an icy gravel road she was driving on, so it was dangerous. And she was driving her dad's Ford LTD, which is a huge car that wasn't really designed for this type of weather especially for a 19 year old girl. So anyway, she was driving and she hit a patch of ice and she lost control of her car and she crashed into a ditch. Now keep in mind, it's about negative 22 degrees and now she's crashed into a ditch, but she's okay. She was a little startled and dizzy, but she was good. Now, normal situations, you would probably call triple A, but she couldn't, and she couldn't wait in that type of brutal cold. So she remembered that she had a friend named Wally Nelson that lived a short distance out. So she gets out of the car in her cowboy boots and starts walking. The wind is blowing hella hard, and the snow is reminding her every second of how cold it is. So she starts off good. She's plodding through the snow. She's thinking it's only a half a mile or a mile out. And in her mind, she's thinking about making it back home to her family. And she's not being able to see clearly because of the snow. So she climbs a hill and looks over it, thinking she has arrived, but she's not there yet. And by this time, she's shivering and she's not moving fast. And she starts to get frustrated that she's not there yet. But she can't stop. She can't turn back. So she keeps pushing. And now she's starting to get tired and confused. Is she even going in the right direction? How much further is it? She thinks that it's a half a mile out or so, but She's been walking for more than one and a half miles and still has not reached her friend's house. About two miles of her walking, she starts to see familiar trees and what looks to be the house of her friend. Or is it just a mirage? By this time, she's scared and she's damn near panicking. So she finally sees her friend's house through the trees. She slowly stumbles towards his home. She has nothing left. She's not even shivering anymore as the hypothermia has set in and the cold is affecting her bones. Her pulse is almost gone as she forces herself forward. She's right there. She's about to be safe. She sees his yard and she begins to walk towards his door. She is sludging on, trying to talk and saying help, but her mouth is frozen. She can't even speak, so she has no choice but to just keep going. She stumbles across a log in the driveway and falls down. She would cry, but there's no tears that are not already glued to her face. She can't even feel the pain anymore. She crawls on her hands and knees until she reaches the porch. She barely makes it to the door and she reaches for the door and when her hand almost touches it, she loses consciousness and falls over 
right at his doorstep. An hour goes by, two hours go by, as her body lays on the blue porch. Her heart rate and her breathing is fading away, and three hours go by, and her eyes are frozen wide open as she lays stiff as a log, completely out. Four hours pass, five hours pass, and six hours pass, and she's all alone, completely frozen and stiff on the doorstep of her friend, Wally Nelson. By this time, her friend has woke up. He looks out the window and sees something covered in snow a hunk in the yard. So he goes out and sees her wide-eyed, frozen, like a block of ice, pale, white, and lifeless. So he pulled her onto the porch and he thought she was dead because she was frozen like a piece of wood. But while examining the body, he saw a few bubbles come out of her nose. So he had a female friend stay overnight and he and his friend tried to put her into his truck, but her body was too stiff to fit in the cab of the truck. So he had to take her car to get her to the hospital. Now when he got her to Faustin Hospital, the doctors were shocked at what they saw. They didn't even think she was alive. After he told them about seeing bubbles, they tried to do everything they could to save her. So they put her on the table and they began trying to give her an IV. But they couldn't even get the IVs into her arm because they were frozen and wouldn't move and the IVs kept breaking on her skin. So now they're thinking, if she is alive, there's nothing left. So they decide to put heating pads on her to thaw her out and warm her body and they had no choice but to wait and see what happens. So they got a pastor and they gather around her in prayer and they started chanting and in a few hours she was awake and started talking. So things seemed like they were looking up but they found out from her waist down her skin was completely black from frostbite. They told her that if she would make it home, she would make it home without her legs. But to everyone's surprise, she made a complete recovery. So that is the story of the frozen lady. I would love to know your thoughts. Do you think this was a miracle? Have you ever been in a situation like this? What would you have done if you were in her situation? Would you have got out the car? Let me know what you think below. And please leave me your comments in the comment section. And let's talk a little bit more about the frozen lady. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wild Shh.